ES Audio. Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, can kombucha help type 2 diabetes? First, though, the European Space Agency's Euclid spacecraft has sent back its first images of space after being launched into the cosmos. These are really, as soon as Euclid opened its eyes, so then for me it was really very much an incredible experience to see how well these pictures showed the depth of the images that Euclid can do. ESA's Euclid project manager, Giuseppe Racca, has been telling us these images prove that the mission has been and can continue to be successful. The spacecraft will map the universe in a way never done before using huge cameras and sensors and will send back images for us to stitch together. It'll also be used to examine dark matter and dark energy. Giuseppe told us these first images only show one millionth of the night sky it'll eventually capture and they don't even represent the highest quality images they'll eventually achieve. This is still before the precise focusing, but as you can see from the images, it's nearly focused already. So we were really very relieved to see that we could already obtain these beautiful pictures even before we really tuned the telescope and the instruments. Giuseppe told us most of the images will be kept under wraps for experts to examine until they're released to the world in 2025. But there are some images from Euclid being made public later this year. The kind of example of what Euclid can do, we are collecting it now. Let's say we are going to make the observations starting in a couple of weeks. And then we intend to release them early November. There are calls for a large trial to see whether the fermented tea drink, kombucha, can help people with type 2 diabetes. A small-scale study carried out by researchers in the US found that after a month, the drink appeared to lower average fasting blood glucose levels. The drink's basic ingredients are black tea, yeast and sugar, and it originates from ancient China, but has grown in popularity in recent years for its supposed health and energy benefits. Despite the thin evidence behind those claimed benefits, researchers from the US trial are calling for a large-scale one to give more conclusive evidence on its benefits for diabetes patients. An ultra-bright flashing X sign on top of Twitter's HQ in San Francisco has been dismantled just days after it was put up. People in the apartment buildings opposite complained that the strobe light was blinding, with some saying it lit the area up at night like it was daylight. According to building inspectors, 24 people complained about the sign over the weekend. It's reported it was put up without a permit, and inspectors said they'd been denied access to the roof to inspect the sign but by Monday, it had been taken down. In Florida, scientists are in a race against time to move precious corals away from warming ocean waters. A killer ocean heat wave is threatening to cause coral bleaching, which is where they lose their color as the algae they rely on are drawn away from the warmer temperatures. Now though, the Coral Restoration Foundation are removing the coral and holding them in controlled lab conditions as a temporary measure for rehabilitation and safekeeping. They said the situation must serve as a wake-up call, emphasising the need for globally concerted efforts to combat climate change. Engineers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have developed an energy-storing supercapacitor made from ancient natural materials. Researchers found that cement and something called carbon black, which looks like fine charcoal, can be combined with water to make a supercapacitor, aka an alternative to batteries, that could store electrical energy. The team at MIT say the device could provide cheap and scalable energy storage for renewable energy sources like wind, solar and tidal power. They said that their supercapacitor could eventually be incorporated into the concrete foundation of a house or it could store a full day's worth of energy while maintaining structural integrity and adding little or no cost to the foundation. Coming up, Google's free AI classes and why a zoo has been forced to deny its bears are humans in costume. Why not hit follow and give us a rating during the break? Welcome back. Now, if you've dabbled with ChatGPT or generated a few surreal images using DALI, you may wonder what artificial intelligence can actually do for you practically. 
Well, Google is stepping in to teach us how to use it, offering free online courses on AI for people in the UK. They include how to grow your productivity with AI at work, focusing on using AI tools to save time, cut down on administrative tasks, and write code. There's also a course for business leaders on understanding machine learning, and Google's promising eight more modules in the coming weeks. The tech giant does have a vested interest in educating the nation, having created its own AI systems to challenge ChatGPT operator OpenAI, Microsoft, and Meta, so this may be a way of getting one up on its competitors. A new study suggests just one alcoholic drink a day could raise a person's blood pressure. Researchers examined data from seven international studies on drinking and high blood pressure and said people should avoid alcohol altogether after finding that routinely drinking, even in small quantities, can increase a person's blood pressure. When that happens, it puts extra strain on blood vessels, the heart and other organs like the brain, kidneys and eyes, and can lead to heart attacks, strokes and vascular dementia. And finally, a zoo in China has been forced to deny its sun bears are actually just people wearing a costume. It's after a video showing one of their bears standing up on two legs at the zoo convinced some that it was a human in disguise. People said that the bear's slender legs and folds of fur made it look like a human was acting like a bear in a costume. But in an audio recording shared on WeChat, a zoo spokesperson said the animal was real and added that in the 40 degree heat, a human in a fur bear suit would not last more than a few minutes before collapsing. You're up to date. For the latest news, come back at four o'clock and search for The Leader Podcast. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. See you then.